Hi, Todd Dunn here on June 29, 2019. I'm aboard my 1936 powerboat Tortuga and today I am going to start doing some of the work on the repair to the uh, area where I've got some deck rot that I talked about in my last video. So, what I'm going to do today is begin to open up the area where the uh, rod is just a little bit and once that's done we're going to find out exactly how this deck is built. I have a pretty good idea because I opened up the foredeck this spring and rebuilt part of it. What I think I'm going to find is the overhead planking which is a 1x4 tongue and groove fur with uh, beveled edges and above that I expect to find the remnants of the old original canvas covering on the deck and then a layer of quarter inch plywood which I think was probably just Luan because when I took it off the bow it was badly rotten and then I expect to get to the fiberglass layer that was put on the deck at some point back in the 90s I don't know exactly when and because I had to cut through that layer I know it's about 3 30 seconds of an inch thick so I don't want to get carried away and cut through it here because I'd like to retain it because it's in good condition and uh, shouldn't be an issue uh, with as long as I don't make a hole in it that I have to patch so what's the first step first step is going to be uh, just cutting out a little bit of the rotted wood and doing a little dismantling of some other wood so that I can make some measurements. So, let's get started. The first step today is going to be to cut out a bit of one of these rotted planks that I intend to replace. Now I'm going to replace them from a little bit underneath this uh, forward beam to back underneath that aft deck beam there. But I'm just going to cut out a little bit in the center today just to do a little bit of investigation to find out exactly what's in there. And I put out a piece of plastic drop cloth underneath to catch sawdust and everything so that I don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning it up. So, let's get started. I'm glad I put down the drop cloth because uh, there's a lot of crud that came down that I'm going to have to clean up. It would be a lot easier just with that drop cloth there. And here is another view of the area I've opened up. So, next step is to bring a piece of wood on that I'm going to make the deck beam out of. And then uh, mark it up because that deck beam is not straight it is curved so I'm gonna to have to cut curves into the top and bottom so I'm gonna bring my wood in and scribe it for cutting the top curve okay at this point I'm gonna start doing a little work on getting ready to replace this deck beam now the deck beam is two and an eighth inches high by one and well, I'll measure it a little further aft where I've got a good boundary on it. So it's two and an eighth high by one and seven eighths inches wide. I don't have any material that size, so I'm going to laminate a new piece out of two pieces of one inch thick fur like this. So in order to do that, I have to slide a piece of fur in here and I can see I, I'm going to have to uh, and scribe it to get an idea of the curve. So that's pretty easy to do. This piece is plenty wide enough so I'm just going to take a pen here and use the
deck to to get an idea of where I need to cut it. Okay, so I've got a line scribed there and there. I should be able to cut this down a little bit. Doesn't need to have much off. There's not a lot of curvature. It's pretty nearly straight. So I'll cut this piece down and, uh, and then I can cut the bottom edge to width, slide it in all the way. You can see it's too high right now to fit by about a quarter inch, but I don't want to take any off because then it won't be uh, big enough. <laughs> So I'll take it home and cut it here and uh, just take that and get the curvature in the top, cut a matching curve in the bottom and then I'll be able to slide it in and it should fit pretty well. Then when I get up to this end I'll mark my scarf that I want to cut in it and that will tell me what uh, where to cut the existing beam to make my scarf. So what I'm going to do right now is just take a little bit of the existing beam out to find out what kind of wood it is. I think it's probably fir. Uh, the center, center of this beam is rotted out. And yes, it is, uh, it is fir. So replacing it for, with fur will be fine. It'll be the uh, same kind of wood where I make my scarf joint. So that beam, as you can see, has uh, no strength left at all. So it, taking it out isn't going to impact the structure of the boat. <laughs> There's just nothing left up there. It's completely rotted out from where it's come through. So that's going to be the next job, get this beam. So once I, I'll mark up one side and when I, then I'll laminate it to another piece of the same stuff to get my thickness and then I'll just plane the other side to match the curve in this. So that'll be pretty easy. So that's uh, where we are right now as far as getting this ready to go. So I think I'm going to work on taking a little more of this wood out today to get an idea of exactly what I've got to look forward to. And since this deck beam obviously has no strength, I'm going to cut a little bit more of it out. And it doesn't appear, at least here, that that planking was even attached to it. It looks like I may have to replace this plank too. It's got some rod at the fore at the end there. Oh, there's a bolt in there. That's what I hit over here. See, that's a, an iron boat nail, so that's original to the boat. And there's another iron boat nail up here where the deck was nailed to the plank. And I guess back here where it was rotted, the boat nails had completely corroded away. out. I just have to make a point of not walking on this part of the deck. So, tear apart like this is the hardest part of this kind of repair. shot here. I'm going to have to replace that too.
there's another bolt up there that's going to have to come out. There are the remains of some iron boat nails there. And I guess I'll have to bolt the replacement piece into the structure here, which is reasonably sound. But I'm really disappointed with how bad this, how pervasive this rod is. of 5200 or something in here. It's going to be a bit of a challenge to get out. I have a feeling the wood out here is attached, has been 5200 attached with 5200 to the wood underneath and there's quite a bit more wood that's going to have to come out of there to uh, do that repair. And I think I hit a boat nail up here. So you can see there wasn't much left of this deck beam. It just came out in little pieces. So I've got a lot of digging out to get everything out of here. Well here we are at the end of today's tear out session. I've removed most of the deck beam that needed to be replaced. And I removed uh, a piece of two inch thick fur that was completely and totally rotted out. Or at least most of it. I'm going to have to sand off. I'm going to have to sand this edge off so I can get to the screws. This is the mahogany, the end of the mahogany for the cabin house. So I'll have to sand that off to get to the screws that attach it to this now rotted beam so I can take the rest of that off. I've also got a bolt that I've got to cut there to take off. Take off the ceiling so I can get the rest of this really punky piece of wood out and it looks like I might need to replace a little bit of this stringer so it's turning into a much bigger job than I anticipated so we'll have to see how far it goes fortunately the stringer only extends back basically to here so it shouldn't be that big a job and every time I touch that I get more crud down there that I tried to wipe up already So this is going to be a bigger job than I thought when I started, but it's still, you know, not going to be that big a job. The tear out is by far the worst part of it. And I'm probably going to go all the way, I'll probably take this piece out too, and maybe all the way out to the end. I have enough new wood to go in there. Now let's uh, go talk about the wood that I'm going to put back in. So now I'd like to take a couple minutes to talk about the wood that I'm going to put back in. I've already mentioned the deck beam, which is uh, 2 and an eighth inches high by 1 and 7 eighths inches thick. I'm going to make that up out of two pieces of 1 inch thick fur. And uh, as you saw, I scribed this one so I can cut the top curvature into it. Once I get that done, I'll cut the bottom curve. I'll laminate up another piece of fur to this and we'll have a new deck beam ready to scarf in. So that's pretty easy. I also have to replace a piece of the stringer it looks like that the end of this deck beam sits on. So that's also going to be made up from two pieces of one inch thick Douglas fur that I'm going to epoxy together and then epoxy scarf onto the sound part of that uh, stringer. So that uh, will not be a particularly a uh, big job and that stringer doesn't extend more than a few inches aft of where this deck beam will be so that's probably only going to be replacing about six or eight inches of wood so that's easy then comes the overhead as I said the overhead is made up of 
one by four tongue and groove fur, which is three quarters of an inch thick, and but it has bevels on the sides so that you, when you put it together you have a beveled groove. And uh, unfortunately the only one by four tongue and groove fur that's available around here is planking stock that doesn't have bevels. Now this is a piece of it that I planed some bevels into and uh, they're not very good but uh, I can do that or I can use this stuff. Uh, this is uh, fur wainscoting, but it's 9 sixteenths of an inch thick, so it's 3 sixteenths of an inch too thin. But what I can do before I put this in is I can put in an extra layer of plywood. The plywood that's in there I think is 5 sixteenths inch, and the plywood I have is quarter inch. So if I put in one layer of plywood, I'm going to be a quarter inch too thin when I put this in. So a second layer of plywood glued into the bottom of the existing fiberglass deck should just about be perfect to make this uh, overhead material match up just right. The other thing that I have to replace down there is that uh, bulkhead at the aft end of the cabin that I ripped out. That turned out to be a single piece of two inch thick Douglas fir. You can't get that around here. So what I'm going to use instead is two layers of one inch thick Douglas fir that I will epoxy together. And that will be the new bulkhead. The aft end of that two inch thick piece of fir appears to have a piece of three quarter inch plywood bonded to it with 5200 and that piece of plywood makes up the outside of the hull and I'll show you where that is right now. Okay we're looking at the uh, outside of the boat now and that is the aft face of that plywood that uh, that two inch thick piece of fur is bonded to with 5200 and I will be cutting that plywood out and replacing it. I'm probably not going to use plywood because I don't have any and I don't want to buy a whole sheet of three-quarter inch marine plywood for one square foot. So what I think I'm going to use is mahogany just like I used for the cabin house and uh, I have three-quarter inch mahogany that will be a good replacement for that plywood and if I varnish and paint it it should uh, be nice and weatherproof just like the mahogany cabin house. Okay, so that is everything that I'm going to replace. After I finish the tear out, which I think is probably going to happen on Monday, the first thing I'm going to do is put the mahogany face that uh, is the outside of the hull back in so that it'll be watertight. After that, I'm going to go up and replace the end of the stringer that's rotted with new wood by scarfing in uh, two layers of Douglas fir and uh, to get a nice solid uh, end of the scarf for that deck beam to sit on. The next step will be to uh, glue up a couple layers of marine plywood to the bottom of the existing fiberglass deck and then to put in my replacement overhead material. Uh, before I get to that point I will have finished painting the overhead. Right now it's got a single coat of uh, Interlux Bright Sides Gloss White and I'd like to get at least three and maybe four coats on before it goes in. After that I'll put that bulkhead back in and then the final thing I'm going to do is put my deck beam back in by scarfing it into the end of the existing deck beam and attaching it to the top of the new stringer. And once that's done, it'll just be a little bit of painting and we will have all sound wood replacing what is now um, basically a bag of rotted wood. This is the wood I took out today. And that will do it.
So, anyway, hope you enjoyed seeing me exploring this problem and finding out uh, that it's considerably worse than I thought it was going to be, but it's still easily fixable and shouldn't really take more than an extra day or so. I'm probably not going to work on the boat tomorrow because uh, we're supposed to have thunderstorms tomorrow and I don't want to uh, open up the boat to the outside uh, and then have a thunderstorm come and dump a whole bunch of water into the boat. Terra. So I'll probably wait until Monday, it's Saturday now, to finish the Terra part and get started putting the boat back together. So that's where we are right now and what we have to look forward to. So anyway, hope you enjoyed seeing this little project that's morphing into a bigger project as every wooden boat project does. If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you get an indication of when my next video and this project pops up. And if you uh, liked seeing me suffer today, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.